What's up YouTube, Crafting Cars here, happy Tuesday. Now for today's video, we are going to be continuing the rear disc upgrade or conversion on my 97 Civic here. And today we're doing one of the trickiest steps and that is routing the e-brake cables. So let's hop on this car and I'll show you what I'm working with. All right, so obviously the first step is gonna be removing the old cables. We'll start on the passenger side and yeah, let's take a look at what we're working with here. So not gonna lie, I think this is gonna be a kind of a shitty day. So here is where the old e-brake was, where it kind of connected to the back of the drum brake assembly there. Uh, as you see, we cut that, so don't have to worry about this thing anymore. So the e-brake feeds, or the e-brake cable feeds through the trailing arm here. I'll slide under the car. <clears throat> Okay, so here is where it goes through the trailing arm, and then it's connected to the trailing arm with this one bracket. This bolt looks like it's going to be pretty easy to take out. And then we slide back a little bit farther. And then this is still the cable here. And this is my exhaust right here, so it goes kind of underneath the exhaust. And then you got another bracket right here. Now as you can see, you can't really get at the bolt for this bracket. It's actually hidden back up in here. So that's gonna be kind of tricky to get at. And then you see the cable go underneath this plastic piece right here. Now if I back up a little bit. This whole plastic piece is basically one big tray that goes under the, uh, looks like yeah, the gas tank here. And in order to get this plastic piece off, looks like I gotta take this heat shield off. In order to take the heat shield off, looks like I'm gonna have to drop the exhaust. So gonna be kind of a pain but I think that's gonna be the easiest way to get at all the hard to reach bolts and to have easy access to the cab of the car all right so like I was saying the first step for me is gonna be dropping the exhaust it's pretty simple on my car I've got one flange kind of behind the disc brake setup there and then I've got a v-band towards the center of the car so I'll go ahead and set the camera up on time-lapse and get that knocked out real quick the exhaust removed and now that that's out of the way we have a much better view of our e-brake cable we can see where it goes from the inside of the trailing arm all the way to where it disappears kind of behind the heat shield in that plastic tray so next thing i'm going to do is take off the heat shield see what kind of access that grants us and then once i get that thing off shouldn't be too hard just a couple rusty 10 millimeter bolts uh, once i get that removed we'll see if i have to remove this plastic tray i think i'm gonna have to and this shouldn't be too hard easy or either. It's just gonna be a couple uh, rusty 10 millimeter bolts holding down these little hold down brackets and then kind of scattered throughout the bottom of the plastic tray. Okay, so this has gotta be some sort of Christmas miracle. We got the exhaust dropped, the heat shield removed, the plastic tray removed, and none of the hardware even fought me at all. So all the bolts came out pretty dang easy, even though they're pretty pretty rusty, pretty crusty looking. Uh, a couple of the plastic trim pieces stripped out a little bit, but that's kind of what I expected. Uh, but then going under the car, now we have a much better view of everything. So here's where it comes to the trailing arm. Yet again, we'll be removing this bolt here, come back a little bit. Then we have much easier access to this bolt here. Be able to get in there with a ratchet, no problem. And then e-brake cable snakes around here into the cab of the car, right underneath where the e-brake handle is. So this is gonna be pretty dang easy to remove. And then yeah, we'll go ahead and start with the passenger side, but gonna do both sides. All right, so a quick pro tip that'll make your life a little bit easier. If you guys remember, this bracket was bent up, so we couldn't really get at the head of this bolt here. The new e-brake cables come with new brackets, so what I did was I just took this thing and bent it down, and then that makes it so much easier to get access to this bolt here. So you can loosen it up. And take it out like so. 
but so far we got our first bracket removed, our second bracket removed, and now we have to remove our third bracket right there. So, go ahead. <laughs> There's rust everywhere. <laughs> Alright, so that's all three brackets detached. Now we'll go inside the car and remove the cable from the handbrake assembly. I already have my center console unbolted, so just pull, go ahead and pull that right out. And here is where the e-brake cables attach. So they're pretty easy to slide out of here. Just like that. Go ahead and do both of them, I guess. So now we'll remove this bracket here. And then I've got some videos on how to pull apart the interior of this car, so I'll go ahead and put that in the description. Basically what you're gonna wanna do is remove the back seat. I've kinda got a weird setup here. Uh, then take the carpet, pull it forward, and then you'll have access to where the cables go through the floor. Now you can try to push them through the top. It's gonna be kind of tricky with one hand here. What I might end up doing is just going and pulling them through the bottom. It's probably gonna be a little bit easier. Ah, there we go. That's one of them. So now that we got the old crusty passenger side e-brake cable out, we can go ahead and install the new OEM Civic SI e-brake cable. This is the part number for that, but of course I'll have all the part numbers in the description below. And I'll go ahead and reuse the factory hardware. There's a little bit of surface rust on it, but the threads still look really good, so probably just put a little bit more anti-seize on the threads. Go ahead and pretty much reverse the process we used to pull this out. Just basically gonna snake it through the same kind of same kind of routing through the trailing arm and the brackets are all brand new like I was saying so that'll be really nice and easy to bulk up and yeah, I'll throw it back on a time lapse and catch up with you guys when I'm all done. decided just to finish up doing both sides so here is our brand new cable installed all the way there and here's our other cable all the way there so that is all the hookups underneath the car and then if you want to know how to attach it to the caliper itself You can see I'm actually missing one bracket. So there's a bracket that goes and bolts to those two holes and then slots this piece in. I will get that ordered up and get that part installed. Uh, but to connect this cable exactly to the little lever here, all you need is these part numbers here. This is the pin, slide through like this. Take your little clip, and that slides through the hole in there. Like so. And then if you take a look inside the car, I didn't really, oh, 
I didn't really have to adjust these at all, but I put that bracket back on and these ends slid right into this bracket here. So we're looking good. Now, all I really have to do now to finish the job is get the new um, brake lines in to connect from here to the banjo bolt on the caliper. I'm still waiting for those in the mail, so maybe that'll be uh, a part four, I guess. I ordered some Chase Bay's lines. They're kind of specialty lines. And uh, while I was underneath the car, there was a lot more rust than I was really expecting. So if you go ahead and take a look at these lines, Inside the track here I'm not very happy with that so a lot of those I mean I think a couple of these are fuel lines and then having my brake lines look like that is just not really the safest thing so I figured while I have this all stripped down I might as well go ahead and take care of those lines as well just to be safe well guys I hope that video could help you out we have now successfully swapped over our old drum brake style e-brake cables into some new OEM Honda Civic SI e-brake cables and that's one big step closer to finishing our rear disc brake upgrade slash conversion slash restoration project now and yeah it looked a little daunting at the start um, but once you got into it everything kind of came apart pretty easy and bolted up really nice so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be uh, yeah thank you for your patience I know it's been a lot of steps this is gonna end up I guess being a four-part series so thought I was gonna get it done a lot faster but it is what it is you gotta wait for parts sometimes so whatever but yeah um, I suppose tune in next Tuesday I'm gonna be doing a 2021 uh, recap video for New Year's so try to take all the best snippets from all our videos in the past year so you can look forward to that video uh, you can even be uploading you might not be doing every Friday now, but make sure you check every Friday uh, to see what he's got going on in his garage over there uh, with his RX-7, his LS swap, and everything like that. And yeah, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, sorry for the footage underneath the car. Uh, a lot of that I had to do on a smartphone, and I don't have my Sony smartphone anymore. I had to switch over to a Samsung smartphone, and I was reviewing some of that footage, and it looked kind of like laggy sometimes. So hopefully that looks okay when I edit the video. So yeah, if you're wondering, it's pretty tight and it's kind of kind of shitty to film underneath the car there, but we got it done. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for you today. I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>